functions. So a function is a type of relation, and a relation is two numbers that are connected for some reason. A function is a type of relation where each input has exactly one and only one possible output. So let's take a look at how these look. So this is a mapping. We saw mappings when we looked at relations. So we have our input in our first oval and our output in our second oval. And each input only has one output. So negative 3 goes to negative 6. Negative 2 only goes to 0. Negative 1 only goes to 3. And 0 only goes to negative 1. So that's how a function works. I like to think of a function kind of as the phone numbers in my phone. So I know that if I call one of those numbers in my phone, I know what's going to be ringing at the other end. Um, I can guarantee which phone will be ringing if I dial a specific number. It's not a guess. It's not that if I dial a specific number in my phone, there's a few different phones. I, I don't know which phone is going to ring on the other end. I can guarantee which phone will be ringing if I dial a number in my phone. So if I input a number on my phone, I know what output, what phone will be ringing at the other end. Um, so this is definitely a function. The second one is set up as a table. So notice negative 3 will get me negative 6 if I'm dialing my phone. Negative 2 will get me negative 5, but negative 2 could also get me negative 3. So this is not a function because if I think about dialing my phone, if I dial negative 2, I might get negative 3 on the other end, or I might get negative, uh, negative 5, or I might get negative 3 on the other end. So there's two possibilities. I'm not really sure what I'm going to get. It's kind of like the wheel of phones. I don't know who I'm going to dial, if I, who I'm going to get picked up on the other end if I dial a negative 2. So this is not a function. Uh, let's take a little look at this last one, which looks a little weird, but let's think about it in the context of our phone. So negative 3 has an output of 5, negative 2 has an output of 5, negative 1 has an output of 5, and 0 has an output of 5. So if I think about my phone, if I dial negative 3, I get 5. Gonna get 5. If I dial negative 2, I'm going to get 5. If I dial negative 1, I'm going to get 5. And if I dial 0, I'm going to get 5. So I have contacts in my phone who have more than one number attached to them. I have um, my mom. She has a cell phone. She also has a home phone. She also has um, a work phone. So I can use any one of those three numbers to get to her. So I could have different phone numbers, different inputs, still attached to the same output. That's okay. That is still a function. Remember, I need to be sure that when I dial a number, I know who I'm calling at the other end. I know if I pick this input, I know what the output is going to be. It's not going to be a guess. So these are our functions. We've talked about mappings, tables, and ordered pairs. Let's take a look at functions as far as graphs go. Um, so a graph for a function can look like this. And again, we're we're thinking about a function as each input has only one output. This is a type of graph called a discrete function because it has a series of points. They're not connected to each other. There's no reason to connect them with any lines. And the way we can tell if a graph is a function or not is we think about a vertical line test. So if I imagine that I'm drawing a vertical line, we may have a pencil, and I'm, and I'm running a vertical line across my coordinate plane. Uh, I want to make sure that that vertical line intersects any part of the graph at only one point. If it intersects it at more than one point, it is not a function. So if I imagine going across this graph here, I'm only going to hit one of these points vertically at any time, so this is a function. Here's some pictures of some different functions that are not, um, that are or are not functions. So imagine this one, if I ran a vertical line across it, it doesn't hit that graph in more than one spot, that's a function. The second one, if I run a vertical line across it, it doesn't hit the, the graph in more than one spot. Notice here I've got a solid dot, and there I have an open dot, which means that the graph really only has one output for this input. It's down here in my negatives. This graph, however, if I run a vertical line across it, you'll notice that it would hit this graph in two points at one place, and so this is not a function. So again, if we think about our phone, if there's any point where one input would have two possible outputs, then it's not a function. We can also think about functions from an equation. So we might have a reason to connect these two numbers, these two values, with an equation. If I'm going to be drawing a line, it's called a continuous function, as opposed to a discrete, where we just have a series of points. A continuous function, I need to draw a line. So here I have the equation 2x plus y equals 5. 
So in order to graph this, I am going to make myself a quick table. I'm going to choose some ordered pairs on my own. I can pick up some numbers on my own, some inputs on my own. I can pick whatever inputs I want. And I'm going to use those inputs to come up with some outputs to create some ordered pairs. So I always like to pick some negatives and some positives and zero to see what happens. I'm going to pick numbers that are friendly for me to work with. Um, so I picked integers. I stayed away from fractions and decimals. And I'm going to see what happens when I plug it into my equation. So here I took my equation. I substituted negative 1 in for x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I have negative 2 plus y equals 5. I know that in order to make this equation true, y has to be 7. Negative 2 plus 7 gives me 5. So that gave me my first ordered pair. I created the rest of the ordered pairs once I kind of figured out what that looked like. Um, and then I graphed those ordered pairs. Since these aren't the only points that make this equation true, these are just the ones I used to find the pattern, um, I need to draw a line to represent all of those other points here. So this is continuous because these, these points continue to the left and they continue to the right. Um, this is a function because if you know, remember our vertical line test, if I draw a vertical line and follow along here, at no point does my vertical line ever touch two points on that graph. 